Okay, good morning, gentlemen and lady. Welcome. My name is Ryan Buchanan, and I'd like to talk about what I call digitally interfacing the classroom. Um, first, we're going to talk a little bit about what is a digital native. Welcome, ladies. Yeah, please. If you don't have a tablet, there's two left. Grab them, please. Uh, what is a digital native? Uh, and, and then compared to a digital immigrant. Um, then we're going to really dive into an apps workshop. It's been more of a question and answer, um, and I really want to get our hands dirty and get into some of the apps, um, and just, uh, just scratch on the tip of the iceberg of the cornucopia of apps out there in cyberspace. Clearly, they're, they're just popping up every day, and your students will pop them up. Have you seen Instagram? Have you seen Tumblr? Have you seen all these new apps? Okay, and then just I'll close as I'm signaled to, uh, with uh, just two or three minutes about what the future of education might look like. Of course, because we can't know what it will look like. Um, by a show of hands, actually, by a show of hands, how many could give up their mobile for an hour? For an hour. Excellent. Am I sleeping right or not? What's that? Am I sleeping or not? Yeah. Okay, uh, not. No? Okay, I could give up my, how, how about, hey guys, awesome, how about, let's say four hours? Yeah, if we have to, but if there's no reason for us, then we have a time. So is that a yes or no? I can if I want. Okay, okay. How many of you can get, okay, give up your mobile, how many could give up the internet for a day, for four hours to a day? It's not for a day, no, it's not possible. No, it's impossible, okay. I could give it up. Um, someone at what a previous presentation said for a weekend, and I said gladly, right? Um, would you give it up for a weekend? Yeah, if you're on your own, no. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I I would, yeah, Adam would. Um, so we can have some sense of the dependence that our younger generations have. Um, this young man, his name is Sammy, and he's a student of mine, and he's what Mark Prensky calls a digital native. He was born in 1994. He's had a mobile since he was about nine or 10. And I talked to Sammy about his mobile uh, and, and others of his generation, and they say that they think of it as a sort of a part of them, a sort of an extra limb, an extra hand that reaches out into cyberspace and the global superhighway of information a connection to all those others of his global digital generation. Um, what's more, I've read research, and it's been bouncing around out there, that he thinks of the internet as an extension of his brain, an extension of, of his connectivity to his information. Um, I think his teachers, and it looks like we've got a, a little bit older crowd, like myself, um, I think we think of it as a tool. I think it was a tool, an online global library from which I can call information, I can put it into fun projects, presentations, create other works. He thinks of it as connectivity. He thinks of it as his bond with all those others of his generation as well. His Instagram, his WeChat, his WhatsApp, his you know, Tumblr, ad, in, ad nauseum, right? So what if, and this is the question, what if when he comes into my classroom, I ask him to give up that extra loop, his hand, give up your technology. So in essence, in his, his mind, tie your hand behind your back, okay? Play football with one leg tied behind your back. Tie your hand behind your back. Because you're removing his connectivity to the virtual world, you're sort of taking away a part of his brain as he sees it, okay? So this is not a very conducive situation for young Sammy. And we get what Mark Prensky called, in his book, a response of engage me or enrage me. And some of you may have seen that knocking around in, in the cyberspace world. And you've probably seen it in your classrooms. Um, I've been teaching around the planet for eight years, and every time, if I ask someone, even if they're, in my perception, being rude, and texting or, or Instagramming or even watching a video, if I ask them, could please put it down. It's, you get that engagement and rage. Put it away, turn it off, right? They look at you from under the, I don't know how the ladies are, probably not. But our young gentlemen, go ahead. Are they? 
Do you, oh really? Do they eyeball you get like this? Yeah, so this is why we get the mobile brakes and we can touch the mobile brakes. Mobile brakes? Yeah, we can touch it. This is so they can be focused on the first time. That I've never heard of that. Mm -hmm. Gentlemen, do you do mobile brakes? <laughs> I'm gonna do that. How often do you do that? I do that two minutes. Uh, two to three minutes. Two to three minutes? Yeah. In, and, like, uh, like in a two hour class, I do two to three minutes. Okay. So like sometimes, sometimes, sometimes I can put my spice, sometimes, but not twice. I just want to put it as a guy and check if somebody wanted that call. Oh, they get I think that's brilliant, back. gentlemen. And I think I'm so happy. Oh. Just, okay, you can touch it. You've got 60 seconds. <laughs> I think that might work. I, 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 work. How long have you been, I'm, I'm sorry, how long have you been doing that? I've been doing it for two years, two years, almost a year. Brilliant. What's your name? Hola. Okay, thank you, Hola. I'll, I'll, uh, I'm starting a WhatsApp group for the ideas that we can spread. There's no reason for us to reinvent the wheel. Um, and we've got this WhatsApp group with about 40 teachers from KSOL. And one of the apps I'm going to present today came from that group. This is a great idea, I think. We'll talk about it. Okay? Um, so we got the engage me or enrage me. Now, let me ask you a question. Um, how many of you have difficulty getting your students to focus? In class, on your lecture, okay. We have to right now. Okay, around eighty percent. Some of you don't. Okay. Does anyone not have problems with their? Because you guys are brilliant. If you are, or I want to go to your school. Um, yeah, we have problems. Let me roll that question a little bit. How many people think that students today just have problems focusing? Young people today just can't focus. They focus, but on different things, you know. They do other things, like they want them to focus on. Okay, that's key. It's choosing what to make them focus on. Okay. Educators out here? Uh, I mean, it depends on what's going on, what subject you are teaching, or what time of the day, or uh, if they were watching a game, they are you know, yeah. engaging with some cell phones and more news. Okay. It becomes an addiction. I guess I, I've expressed it in a positive way. I think young people are more scattered. Mm -hmm. Or they call it multitasking? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's a problem, please. Um, they, they did some research, uh, like brain data research, and uh, they found out that the brain has changed because of this technology. So they, um, they uh, because of what they are like my generation, so the way, the way they are wired is different from ours. In That's why we think we are not focused because we are not we are teaching them the old fashioned way. Indubitably, some have said we're preparing them for the past. If we if we teach in the tradition of the past, we're preparing for the past. Because that's not what the future is going to look like. Well, so we're kind, we're positive. I like that enthusiasm about you know whether or not they can focus. Some student, some of my fellow teachers will are just me. They're like that, that problem with kids today is they can't focus. Well, have, maybe you've seen this pop up on your student's interface during class, if you've got interface. I, I'm, I'm sure I have, I, all, lots. Maybe not so much that one. I wish I would have put in the sound for this one. Ever seen that pop yeah. up? <laughs> what is it? Dun, 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 dun. Right, and depending on whether you like it, because some teachers play it. I mean, CEOs in America, like 60% of CEOs are actually playing video games at work. That's one of the statistics that I read recently. Clash of Clans was making something like $25 million a day about a year ago. Um, that thing is, it's, yeah, it's always popping up. I've had students corroborate 12 hours of just like drinking Pepsi and maybe eating Cheetos or something, but playing this game and not moving. We call that something different in America. But they are focused. I believe that they're focused. Someone pointed this out to me way before I began this sort of, this uh, pilgrimage into the digital, uh, digital nation. Um, how about this one? Maybe more for the ladies. Angry Birds. I, again, I don't know if these are the number one apps of all time, but they're amazing and they are focused. Try to pull someone away from that. It's harder than, I'm stuck in my novel, but, but you know, and sometimes I'll pull away, but it's more difficult, I think, to pull someone away from a digital interface than from a normal script interface, okay? So I believe that they can focus. Um, Carnegie Mellon University had some recent research and they studied the digital natives and the digital generation and they said that 
In a country with a strong gaming culture, the average young person will have spent up to 10,000 hours online gaming by the age of 21. 10,000 hours. Does anyone know how many years that is? Just how many years is 10,000 hours? Two? Ladies, how many years is 10,000 hours? Don't throw me a guess. It's like counting the beans in a jar. Five! It is five. It's five years of eight hour days. It's five years of a full time job. That's 10,000 hours. And that number has popped up in Malcolm Gladwell's, well, not popped up, he probably introduced it pretty much. Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers. On 10,000 hours was the time it takes to become a virtuoso violinist or pianist or to become fluent in a language. And we see it in other research out there in science. Um, so th they're becoming expert at something. They're becoming expert at uh, interacting with the digital world. Um, in his book, Exodus to the Virtual World, Edward Castronova, at Castronova who's an economist, you know, I'm, I'm a teacher and sort of a gamer and, and I enjoy the digital world and so I'm exuberant and enthusiastic. He's an economist and these guys are shrewdly rational, right? He says that this is a mass migration and, and he says it's not going to slow down. Indeed, it will become exponential. It's, it's been exponential and it'll increase. He says in the next decade, up to three billion new users can come online. And we're seeing that all over the place. It's exponential. Uh, there's some number, about like 95% of the world has access to cellular broadband internet service. Okay, so this is not, there's no reason to believe that the tablet or the cell phone is going to become less attractive or less addictive. Um, and as a teacher, I'm like, how do I deal with that? How do, how, do I pull my, how do I pull my students out? I think that was the control issue that came up at PSU. How do I pull my students out of their digital interface? And in, in a lot of consideration and this, a raft of research out there and uh, observations, I think I have to get on the other side of the interface somehow. Put my lectures, um, that's been done in the, in, by Salman Khan, maybe little YouTube videos, put my lectures, put my text, maybe a Kindle and maybe an e-reader, and put my curriculum in general onto a digital interface. They're learning all day long with these devices, and I know a lot of us have put those in classes. Some have actually been pulled out after put in. Um, please, you're welcome to come on in. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. Um, so, so based on that raft of observations, digital devices, okay. Now, technology, throw technology at a problem. Does that solve it? We've seen it, I've seen it in my uh, school, the Higher Institute for Water and Power Technology. A lot of these young gen gentlemen have either lost or broken their tablets, they've been stolen. Some of their teachers have told them, ah, don't bring that to class, we won't use it in some of their classes, and that's possible, sure. Um, are they being used? How do we use them? What do we use? I've got a suggestion of about five apps, and again, this is just the tip of the iceberg. And I am not an expert at this. If you guys have some, maybe this is a good time to pass this around. Sign up if you'd like to partake in a WhatsApp group that I'd already begun. There's about 40 teachers. Sign up and I'll add you to the WhatsApp group for these, some of these apps and some of these ideas like mobile phone breaks. We'll put that out there so we don't have to reinvent the wheel every time we come up with a technology idea. Um, please sign in and put your email and I can connect with you by my website and blog as well. So, um, we'll probably only get to about two of these and I really want to dig in and get to know the two that we get into. Um, the ones that I want to talk about though, um, there's an e-journal or Google Keep. Lots of you have seen it, maybe used it. One of our teachers in the last presentation mentioned Evernote. Evernote is brilliant. Does anyone use Evernote? No. So the, it's a green icon with an elephant. Brilliant. Time saver. Amazing. You can store your... It's called Evernote. I prefer Google Keep when I'm introducing an e-journal because it's super simple. Photograph, notes. I think, it, I think you can store audio and possibly video. 
it is super simple. And of course, it's stored out there in the cloud, as is all of the stuff nowadays. Um, the next one is Merriam-Webster. This is a recognized name in American lexicons, gone digital. Um, teach them how to use a dictionary. Teach them how to use a speech-to-text dictionary, which adds the element of a pronunciation. And I've got a little video that I'm going to show you in just a second. Um, this has become, this was the eye-opener, and again, put me on my mission here, the speech-to-text idea with Merriam-Webster. Let me just watch that video right now. Got it. So, so Mansur got torque immediately. He just huh? popped up. He didn't, did it give you a list? Yes. He gave you a list? Okay. Very good oh. deal. Thank you. China for five years. Pronunciation drilling. It's banal, somewhat childish, it's boring. I hate doing it when I'm learning a new language. We do it because that's a traditional method of, of you know, absorbing an information and pronunciation. Um, and, and you know, if I do that torque, and you guys torque, 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 and then the one by one. Torque, okay, torque, torque. They hesitate to do it or just try not to do it. We don't like to do it either. Um, with the Merriam-Webster, they will do it and do it and do it until they get it. Um, and the questions come up, what if they don't get it? Or if they're using speech to text, what if they don't get it? I don't mind as a teacher for the outcomes if they don't get it because they're continuing to say it. As long as I can confirm with them that yes, you're pronouncing it correct correctly, move on to the next word. And they're like, no, no, I must get it. And I've done some research, and we can, I can talk later about that if, or if you're interested, on using speech to text. And the determination to get that to register on a digital device is unbelievable. Maybe you've used speech to text. I, that's all I am is speech to text now. And these machines will calibrate to your voice. Um, but there's uh, some different speech to text devices that we're using Dragon, natural language, uh, naturally speaking. And of course, the Google speech to text engine is just brilliant. Um, Speaking of which, okay, um, let me move forward a little bit and talk about this one, okay? Uh, text to speech, text to speech engine. Quizlet, has anyone heard of this yet? Quizlet, okay? Opinions on this one? Stop asking. That's not in the Please. Uh huh. Okay. Four or five years, brilliant. I just heard about it like last week. Okay. I just heard about it last week, and we WhatsApped it, and I prepared a whole little spiel on it. Um, you can speak. To, it's a, what it is. Is it's a digital flashcard, and it's super simple. Um, the students love it. It gives you the flashcard, digital native, and it'll say it to you. Or it, with a teacher account, you can put your own voice in and then it'll return it back to you when you flip the card over. You just tap the iPad or tap your digital interface. Okay? Um, and so I think that's a really wonderful device. And we'll, Plus, they can play games as well. It has a, um, game. It takes time. You can do that in class, but um, I think that whole rental and sometimes that's like, you know, 
Brilliant, yeah. There's, there's some play, uh, space race and some different yeah. games. There's a matching game that they can play, and they'll do it. And you can have competitions among your students. Um, it'll put up by matching, and we'll look at it. Um, and the last one is a website builder. And um, this is from Simple Different. It's a UK company, um, an, an e-forum. It's got blogging elements. You can email back and forth to them, and they can make potentially a future CV. It's their own website. And they can actually buy their own domain for very cheaply and create their own website and link it to that as well. Super simple. I think it's easy to set up as a PowerPoint presentation. Um, of course, I geeked out into the digital world. So, uh, but we can move through those. Um, the first thing that I want you guys to do is, if everyone's on the internet, is go to your device. Everyone have a device, please. And if, if it's your own device, go to your Play Store. Any questions at that point? Play Store? Okay. Okay, so I've got my screen up here right now. Okay. Um, for those that I gave you, okay, we've got the apps that I introduced set up down at the bottom. Um, if you don't have those apps, um, it'll take a minute to register. Okay, maybe it's not. This is inevitable. Is it? Okay, okay, there we go. Okay, so this is your Play Store. Okay, if you're on, okay. Okay. So if, if you get lost, the one to tap at the bottom is your home or this little icon here. That'll take you to your home screen. Your Play Store, where you would find Socrative or Socrative, is what I want you to download, is right here. Please, if you, you're very savvy in this, help the person next to you. Um, this is one of the brilliant ways that the students are learning. Lots of us don't know how to do it, but they learn together. So is the Play Store the same as the App Store? The Play Store is the same as the App Store. Okay, I'm sorry, yeah, for the, for the Apple users. And I've just recently become an Apple user, and I've got my, I've got my MacBook over there, but it wasn't fancy enough to throw it there. Are you using student or teacher? Te uh, student, please. Please go to the student one. Um, after I clicked on the Play Store, now I've got apps. Home. So what do I? Need? Okay, you're actually with one of my tablets. If you go to your home, just home. Mm -hmm. The home again, you guys. And let me slow down too. Here's your home. Okay. Go to your home and click on Socrative will be, there should be a student one and there should be a teacher one. And yeah, let's, I mean, get in there and get your hands dirty. This is, for what it's supposed to be in a workshop, you, you're really gonna wanna, you know, ask questions and move around in these things. Um, we want student for you teacher, would be right teacher. here, okay? We want student or teacher? Uh, student, please, the blue one. Okay. Um, once you've gotten to the open screen there, go ahead and type in S-I-L-C to log in. S-I-L-C as in Saudi Interlink Conference. That's my room. Is that small case? Uppercase, please. S-I-L-C. Okay, ladies, have you found it yet? Saudi Interlink Conference. Okay. Um, actually, you're going to want to go and get Socrative, the name of the app. Okay. The name of the app that we're looking for is spelled S O C R A T I V E. And you want to. Yes. 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 
Okay. Oh, thank you. Please. Are you are you a digital native? <laughs> yes. Help help us. Um, uh, I almost wrote native. Okay. It says that my connection was un unsuccessful. We are digital immigrants. Yeah, we're immigrants. Yeah, I were immigrants from moving into that nation. So, uh, students. Okay. Okay. Once you've gotten to the login screen, if you'll put in S I L C. Oh yeah. Let's try. Um, it's possible that that my router is overloaded and people have logged into my router. Uh, okay. Yeah. And my IT guys back home assured me that I could hold up to twenty five with that. Well, yours is much better than your mom. Yeah. Rocko! Thank you. So yes. Your, yeah, give it a shot now. Sorry. Okay. Uppercase. Uppercase. Okay. Uppercase. And this will take you to a quiz that I prepared for today. Yeah, to join the room, the room is S I L C. Uppercase. Okay, question, Adam? Yeah, I, I can't get in and said it was invalid. Okay. S I L C. You're actually at the teacher one. Okay. If you'll go back to your home, that's your center button. Looks like it's sort of like a Okay. Is someone printed on this one? The student is right there. Oh, oh, okay. Once you get there to the room screen, type in S I L C. I, you let me, I, I knew that we were going to be overloaded for bandwidth. I didn't comprehend that it would be this slow. It is the yeah, and we've got about thirty people all trying to go into soccer team right now. So the band, think of a traffic jam. It's a bottleneck. We're all trying to get in, even with the different routers. I have two routers. One is S I L C My Fi, my little hotspot. Bad boy right there. That one's available as well. That should hold 15 is what they've said. Do you know that, interesting, Saudi Arabia is number 42 in the world as far as internet speed? We're about two mega, megabits per second. Um, no, anyone have an idea of who's the fastest? Korea. Korea. How fast are they? Korea. Korea. <laughs> anyone know? Do you know how fast Korea is? No. 25 megabits per second. That was that was released this spring. Uh, sorry. Um, please. Oh, sorry. So any to your name? What's my name? Um, <laughs> oh, 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 I can choose. Yeah. You can. Okay. Good. We've got at least one. Let me show you what the teacher will see. This is what a teacher will see. Okay. We do have some folks logged in right now. Okay. This is what I will see, okay, as you're taking the test. Given the bandwidth ability, you will be able to see this on your tablet as you're walking around with your students. Um, you could pull up, you can see, uh, let's see, John is making some headway. Okay, I, I put in a couple from earlier just to give you an idea. Green means correct answer, red means wrong answer. Um, you can, as a teacher, if I wanted to check what the answer is, for example, answer seven, I could go there and I can see their answers here. And it'll give me a list of answers. Let me, I'm, let me slow down. Question five has two correct answers. Mm -hmm. but I, hopefully a lot of them should have several correct answers. It was more for just trial and error type thing. I wanted to, to, you to get some sense of what kind of response they would get for a wrong answer, what they would get for a correct answer. 
Any questions, ladies? I just like the explanation that you give the answer and the explanation you give it because I just gave my students the test the other day on that tool. Uh -huh. And they all want to learn the right answer test immediately. They told me to buy stuff. This is excellent. Just the explanation. Very cool, very cool. Hala? Hala. Hala, hala. Yeah, good point. Because we have the barrier here. Uh, she brings up the point that they will get an explanation. If they, if they get a red stop sign that says you got the answer wrong, it get, you can provide an explanation why they got it wrong. I'm one of those teachers that believes that, believe that tests should be part of the learning process and not a punishment. Um, so in order to get to learn from a test, they should know why they made that wrong. I'm talking to teachers. You guys know that. We know that. Sometimes we forget. You may not want to even deal with this, but some of these you were asking for an answer that you typed in, um, and generally it was yes or no. So, what if they say something like sure? E well, right. I mean, I, I, I'm saying, I, yeah. how does it handle it? Absolutely. This, this is a process of learning how to use these. I agree. Is it a survey? Is it a quiz? Is it a yes or no answer? Yeah. And I, I kind of threw this quiz together, really. Um, so, and I'm the only one who's taken it, so it's not very objective. So please, thank you for the feedback. I appreciate well, that. I'm just curious, can you do short answer? And how does it react oh, to short question answer? Question two. Question two is short answer. So each one of these is actually a different format. You get multiple choice, short answer, okay. true, false. I apologize. I think the question was, what format can I put my questions in? I, I've got a multiple choice format, I've got a short answer format, and then a true and false. There's three so far. And I don't know how long Socrative or Socrative has been out there, but I, I've sent them uh, queries or interests, and they've responded. Um, so is Socrative, uh, so is the Quizlet. Um, has anyone used this before? Two days ago, actually. Okay. Great minds think alike. Yeah. Well, have you used it before? Sorry. Have you used a Socratic before? The, this device. There's a. We know there's a lot of different apps out there for quizzes. This isn't necessarily an ideal. I just gave you. This is a taste of what what's available. It's called Nearpod. Say again. Nearpod. Nearpod. Yeah. Yeah, someone just told me about that Nearpod looks brilliant. I'm excited. I just heard that two or three days ago through their WhatsApp group. What is Nearpod? Uh, and an issue that's come up a lot, how do I control the, How do I con control a classroom if they're on the digital interface? I mean, you guys, if it's tilted up, I don't know if you're on Facebook. Um, with Nearpod, you can control what they see. What's, what's your name? Robert. Robert, have you used it, Robert, then? I've used it, I've used it once, I'm, sorry, so I'm not an expert, I'm sure I've just tried it out. Okay. So how do you spell it? Mm -hmm. I'll write it up on it. As in N-E-A-R. Okay. So, let's see. Cool apps. Okay, so the, this new one that Robert just brought up was called Nearpod. And someone in our WhatsApp group just sent me that. That's brilliant. And it's really marketed uh, enthusiastically. Um, these guys are right on the same sheet of music as I am. Nearpod. Um, the one that I mentioned earlier for note taking was Evernote. Evernote is brilliant. They've been around for years. Okay. Anybody get through that quiz? Okay. Yeah, yeah, we've got a few. Okay, so I can see. Okay. But I, I can't go back and check my answers. Well, you can't do that, yeah. <clears throat> it, you can't go back and check your answers once once you've moved from so you submit it, then you get the, the red sign or the green sign go and it does have, I mean, we're moving through this, but it'll give you down at the bottom the feedback on that if you've got it correct. Or I think it'll give you the feedback either, either way. One thing of the answer, uh, you have to be professional and you have to be aware of technology.
to be able to use it in, in class. This is true or false. I think you know you don't want to be a you know a victim or you know, look at students just look at you like you know you are not uh, into technology and you or you are way behind and they know more than you. So you, I think you have to be professional or you know about technology to, to use it. I, I, I actually answered the same as you did, but when I read the justification, I was, I was convinced that the students teach you. They are the experts. We are the immigrants. So why not just admit that we don't know? Come on, we don't know. That is. What do you do when you get a new cell phone? So I, I don't mean to be egotistical or not here, but please, why not? Some my name can come up. Uh, I finished the clip. Oh, oh possibly at the bottom. There no, we I, go. I don't mind. I yes, you do. Continue. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, um, oh. Okay. And this, of course, is not for right or wrong. It, is, it doesn't. It was more for sample. I've never used this. Have you heard of it? Sandbox. Sandbox. No. Um. Tell us. It's supposedly designed for a classroom that's using tablets. Uh huh. But it allows you to restrict the websites and apps that the students can go on, so that you can at least with the man. <laughs> attempt to focus them. I've never used it. I don't, I've had it for a couple of years and never used it. I'm going to give it a shot. It's really difficult for me to control my guys. You saw my guys. Uh, the young gentlemen, they're out in the middle of the desert. The only thing that's remotely like entertainment, I mean, we live in a town that's probably less than 100,000 people, uh, is, is their, their tablet. And I fight to get those tablets. Every semester, the administration says we're going to cut tablets off, and it's, it's a numbers thing. And I'm like, no. They're like, well, all they're going to use is watch movies and Facebook. And I'm like, I, I, okay. And the other one is Padlet. 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 Okay. Well, actually, you know, in the women's spaces, we have another problem. L I T, you mentioned. L L E T. Okay, sorry. In the women's spaces, we have another problem. It's not going to sometimes a lot of students today with tablets or whatever. They start taking pictures of things and then they post them on Facebook. <laughs> and this usually, honestly, well, yeah, I don't, I don't mean to make light of it by laughing. Um, this is an issue, yeah? Are they videoing you in class? Exactly. And one of the teachers was Facebook. You can get it. To create transparency. Things slip out. What's happened is that there was a box. Everybody could put their electric devices in there. Okay. Oh, I, I think we're. I think what you're pointing at. Okay. So, did you hear the, uh, the lady's question or the lady's comment? Okay. This control. Why control is such an issue? Are they taking videos of you teaching? And she said, in this situation, and we've all done this, or possibly all done it. I've done it. Had a box for them to put their mobiles in. We'll do that at lunch. We used to do that at lunch. Put your mobiles in the middle of the table. Okay. Don't touch it. Okay. Uh, and so you assume that they they are no longer connected. It's, it's not actually us. It's, it was by the administration or by the president. Right. Nobody uses the little box in class. Or assume they're no longer they connected. And then for the box. Yeah. I don't know who was the administration, and I think the Saudi regulations in universities, accredited universities, is no cell phones in class. Correct. Yes. With camera. Correct. The team is like with cameras. No, no cell phones. With camera. Okay, and with camera. Do they have their cell phones in class? Oh, of course they do. They're there. And that's I'm gotta be practical. They got it. So sorry, sorry, that I just Padlet is different. Padlet allows you to set up a page. Uh-huh. And so you can put a video on that page, you can put a reading reference on the page. Uh, if it's permitted, you could put a musical slice on that page. They go to the page that's always seen. Okay. So you Excellent. completely set the class. That's and, and that's the real issue. Okay, so uh, Robert, Robert. This I'm sorry. The young good looking one is right. <laughs> Robert and oh, John. John. John, okay. John's comment was a uh, Padlet is, it allows them to go to websites, but only will let them view. This is, Padlet is something, and I haven't used it. It used to be Wall Wisher, I think, and 
it changed. It's been around for a long time. All Wisher. Okay. Yeah, but it changed the patterns. And it allows you to create a wall. And on that wall, you put what you want. And then, even if you couldn't do mobile devices, you could, if you have a computer lab, say, uh -huh. they go in and that's what's there. And it's really easy to monitor what's actually coming off the internet because you set it up. I think this is the, I think, John, I think that's an excellent point. I think this is going to be really the focus and development of education, educational digital technology. How, how can we funnel them to the correct sites? How can we raise the, love, the, the rigor and, and, and point them at that? Because right now, uh, one of the gentlemen said that they're just scattered. Overstimulation, was that back here? Just overstimulation. I, but you ask it, a digital native or someone of that generation, how do you deal with the overstimulation of apps and technology right now? And they're like, what? what? <laughs> they don't see it as overstimulation. But I think that there's going to be some need to control that. So Padlet will give these things a shot. Sandbox, uh, Nearpod, looks like a brilliant one. Was there another comment? It's just that, you know, I was in New York. And I saw this like funny thing. There's the truck in front of the mid high school. Uh -huh. So you leave your cell phone and you pay a buck, and you you pick it up once you leave school, like two, three, or three o'clock. The cell phones are not allowed in school. Okay, was it was voluntary, but they, yeah, they had to leave it there, but they could pick it yeah, up. Yeah, and like this guy, he works. He had a big truck, uh -huh. and he like he collects cell phones in the morning, seven thirty in the morning, and they pay him a buck, and they give him the phones at like three o'clock. Like a coat check. <laughs> New York. Governor is about like they, they might let the student or allow the student to use the system so inside the classroom. If the, the the whole practical question for me is if I say no cell phones, are they still gonna have a cell phone in class? Yes. They're still gonna have it. Um, and we've even seen a, a, a great, I would really read digital, teaching digital natives. He points out an, an example of their go to this summer camp up in the, the hills of New York and the, with the parents and the student as they go, you know, go enter the summer camp area, they give up the cell phone. But the parent has planted a cell phone with them underneath their clothes or something in their bag. Do they? Now, go back to Sammy, and think about this, and I've had people say this, and maybe we've done this. They sleep with their cell phones. Oh, yeah. Maybe, maybe we do. Me yeah. <laughs> Good, we're, we're brave over here on this side. I don't sleep with it, but if you found yourself rolling over in the morning, especially hotel stayers, rolling over in the morning, and to turn off my alarm clock, I'm sliding off the alarm clock, that, an email, an important email pops up, and then Facebook, I'm like, well, might as well check the weather while I'm here, if it's snow in Saudi Arabia, and, and then, well, I wonder how my stocks are doing, and you're on your cell phone for like 15 minutes, you're checking your financial portfolio before you've even used the bathroom, and, you know, it's, we're, we're so locked into that thing, anybody done that? Yeah. 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 Is it is it practical? I used to give this presentation in order to, and the, the saying was, in order to compete with the digital digital devices or this exodus to the virtual world, it's an it's a competition we're not going to win. It's something that we sort of embrace and fly with the migration to the digital age. I believe, in my humble opinion. Um, I think I'm to to the point where I need to wrap it up. And I, I knew this was going to. Yeah. Thank you. Um, any other questions at that point? One or two last comments. I don't think we've seen the sign-up tablet. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Did everyone get yeah. on that? Okay, I'll leave it up front. Yeah, please sign up <coughs> if you'd like to join the WhatsApp group. Um, it's been invaluable. We didn't get to Quizlet, but I think that's... Uh, so, so, so of you kind of can produce your own task for the students to... Is there the flexibility where, if it's kind of the quiz format, um, of hiding the answers so they don't see the answers until the end? Um, yeah, 
and really quick, I'll go into that. So if I wanted to, I'll fit, I'm going to finish my quiz here. For, if you guys can see that, maybe I'll turn out the light so that's washed out. Okay, so this is your interface as a teacher. Okay, quiz progress. Some people have finished, some just logged in, weren't able, maybe the uh, internet threw them off. Okay, quiz progress. I want to finish it. Okay, I log off. Now it gives me a choice of downloading an Excel spreadsheet or I can just view it later. Okay, um, so we'll view later. Let's submit it. To start this thing, to answer this question, can I choose to not show them the answers? Yes, you can. Start a quiz. Okay, I go to my quiz, start my quiz data bank. I select the uh, digital interfacing classrooms, brief. Okay, student paste immediate feedback. Student paste, student navigation. And teacher paste. Okay, so you do have some options here. Uh, disable student names, randomize question order, randomize answer order. That's an issue. It's A, B, C, D, you know, A, D, they go out and they, they've taken the quiz, they tell somebody else, well, this is the question. Well, what if the, the answers are randomized? So, what do I have to, I know this sounds like this maybe a dark question, I mean, what do I have to prepare the quiz actually on this application, or could I take uh, another document to download it, say I've got to hold the quiz? Uh, yes! Uh, or, just download it. I think so. I haven't done that, but I, Navigate the, the software, go to the website. I think that they have that option um, that you can actually, you can put in quizzes. And you can share quizzes with other teachers, of course. Um, the quizzes have a, a unique serial number and you can share quizzes. And then you can search for quizzes. One thing, we didn't get to Quizlet. One of the brilliant things about all those uh, digital flashcards that you've created, they're all over the internet. There's something like 100 million users now. And if they allow it to be public, like YouTube, you can use their quizzes. Excuse me, how can I do it in here in ESL writing class? I'm sorry? How can I do it in ESL writing class? A writing? You mean like handwriting? No, writing essays in ESL writing class. You know what? Um, let's talk about that afterward because I've got some ideas on that, but I don't see them actually writing a whole lot now. And, and that's. Can we can discuss that afterward? Because I'm not sure that we do a lot of writing. It's more the apps and the way they consume information now. They're not doing a lot of writing. But so wouldn't so you were saying that the, like, the digital generation is very keyed in? They are focused, but they're multitasking. They're going through a lot of things, so I see apps working on very short quizzes like this. Would writing fit into it? It's too much of a negative task. I agree. I agree. And one of the issues with people are using their tablets is a shiny book that can hold 400 books. It's not an e-reader. Yeah. That's just that's an impressive way to hold 400 books. The, one more question. Yeah, I can say, like, you know, it comes from a, a bank of tests and things like that. Like, you know, what kind of tests? You design your own test. Um, yeah, this kind of needs like a day, this sort of workshop. But I, you guys get in touch with me on WhatsApp and send these questions around. There's a lot of the folks that have come to previous KSOL. They're, they're brilliant, like this young lady. They're, they're brilliant at these things and can walk you through. So you have to design your own test. They give you a format, and a lot of these will give you templates. The, that we, whether it's a quizzing app or a flashcard app, they'll give you templates that you just fill in. And then, okay, and then I can add my questions. Like yeah, and once you just, it'll ask for the, the question and then the answer. And it'll, if you flip over that handout that I've put on there, you can actually print it out. And it's a neat looking hard copy of the quiz that you've taken online. Um, that's a possibility. I've got about five minutes, so let me kind of wrap this up, and that's an example of Quizlet, okay? Didn't get to Website Builder, there's an example. Okay, in closing, I just want to echo the words of Sir Ken Robinson. Some have heard, that, heard of this educator, an amazing man, see him at TED Talks. 
Sir Ken Robinson, when he's talking about the digital natives, the di children of the digital age, this is a generation that's going to be graduating, or graduating, retiring in about 2065. We don't even have any idea what the future will look like in five years. What we do know is that if we, if we do not prepare them with a, for a digital future in which they will be using in, these in their occupations and also further education, we're not preparing them for that future. So this I see as a guy that's geeked out and totally on the bleeding edge of what's going on right now, this is only shift. This is just a short shift. It's going to go in your brain. Okay, we can discuss that later on. But we've got to keep... We, do we have to be experts? I don't think we have to be experts, but we have to be aware of what's available out there and then give it to them. Know what's available. Let them be the experts. And in doing that, learning it, teaching that technology, I think we're going to avoid this scary quote that has been banging around the internet from Arthur C. Clarke. He said this in 1980. He, a, a journalist came up to him and he said, he said, will machines replace teachers? Terminator 2. Will machines replace teachers? He said, any teacher that can be replaced should be. And it's scary, and I think it was taken out of context, and, and it did scare people, and I think we're still scared. The current estimated need for teachers around the planet, around 20 million teachers, we're never going to not need teachers. Another quote that I think is a kind of a retort to this is, technology will never replace teachers. Teachers that know how to use technology will replace teachers who do not. And again, it's kind of scary, but really, I think this stuff is becoming more intuitive. We're out there. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. They're making more templates at these newer apps, and they're going in the direction of education. Um, let me just say thanks at that point. Uh, if we have any questions, please come up and talk to me afterwards. I think I have this room until 1210. So and thank you very much, you guys. Thank you. And please get on the sign up too. Join us in the virtual world. Saudi Arabia is a great place for me to like escape to the virtual world because yeah, we're out in the desert and there's, so, there's nothing there. So sorry, but so so now after signing this form, we're gonna find everybody's gonna be added to. If you don't want to be added, or you can exclude yourself from the no, WhatsApp group. Yeah. I'm any name, oh, any number that's listed below, thank you for coming. Thank you. Um, yeah, it'll pop out. And then the name of the WhatsApp group is uh, K Salt Digital Enthusiasts. But now it's more than K Salt, Kingdom of Saudi Arabia Association of Language Teachers. Maybe I'll just make it Digital Enthusiast Educators or something. But I'm the administrator of that, which is a little unnerving since I've got men and women on that. But I think it's okay. Uh, I'll wait until I'm corrected. So philosophically, I love philosophical questions. What's the relation of digital or virtual reality to reality? Okay. That's well, a shoot. Well, but we're saying we need to engage the students, and they're living in virtual reality. Yeah. So when does that? This is a fascinating question. Um, a really great book by Jane McGonigal talks about it. Um, reality is broken, and people are escaping to the virtual worlds. Uh, reality is broken is the name? It's called Reality is Broken, um, and that's it's a really brilliant idea about how games can make us better and possibly change the world is the subtitle of it. Edward Castronova is really... I have a simpler example. Yeah. I have lots of students, at least the male students in Saudi Arabia, are on their, their texting because it's a social way to interact mm -hmm. and breaking some of the cultural taboos, whether they should or not. It's what yeah. they're doing. But what you will see happening 
is that the young men are texting to talk with friends. When their friends actually get there, they're still texting different friends. So the reality part never really happens. They, they continue to text and ignore who they're with. Ironic. And one of the things that comes up with Salman Khan and some of the and comedians, your digital you is like more interesting than your face-to-face -face you. Maybe you've been at a presentation for children or something, and people are look, looking through their, their hot new tablets, and they're, they're videoing something out there. They're looking at the interface. They're like, check out this resolution. I'm like, check out this resolution. It kind of saying, like looking around, as most of us are digital immigrants and know yeah. the pre internet age, we also have the same comment about losing touch with reality. And it's always been made with different aspects of technology. I mean, with television, you yeah. know, uh, they uh, said people were losing uh, the ability for face to face communication and expecting these unreal. Images on the screen. So that's as their like, friends, people see them as their friends. Lady Gaga's your friend. That's sort of associated. But well, obviously, people always say that about every new time. Yeah, yeah, who hasn't been sitting at the table at lunch? So you got three other guys, and they're all talking to somebody else somewhere else. Right? We're here. Come on, Jake. You want to have a conversation? I'm right here. Uh, Pastor, okay. one point also. I think it's a main thing here trusting the computer, trusting technology. Means because the things are just and you know, make their personality into the computer. You know, they have a talk. Yeah, and you could know, see friends on WhatsApp, they could talk and you know, they could be rich, but in, in this or reality, they are not comfortable, they are withdrawn, they must touch at all. Some people have got, you know, they take the technology to really get a little more. It's a really good book. It's a 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 um, yeah, are we becoming less social? But we're social in a different way. We're like alone, together. But we're yeah, we're we're being social through WhatsApp and Instagram. Um, thank you. So, yeah, cheers. Um, we're we're getting to know each other through this digital media. And the research on that, uh, Sherry Turkle writes this book, Alone Together. The research has actually suggested that people who are introverts are becoming more extroverted because they're willing to put themselves out there. But the people that are extroverts, yeah, unless the nuts like me become sort of less extroverted because now they're moving into the tablets. So, yeah, and also, when it comes to generally speaking, female using like technology, uh, they, they, they trust their feelings when it comes to what's from you. You know, you could you see the real one, you're talking to the judge and stuff like this. Yeah. You know, men are you know, they control their emotions and feelings. I don't know. It's, I've had some wacky stuff. I, I always make a WhatsApp group with my students, and just, it's wild. Uh, it's, one of the gentlemen said, uh, they, they, they're wired different now. The way that they think is different. You, one of the issues that came up in America was that Facebook, a lot of young people were appearing on Facebook with alcohol-related images. They were boozing it up, and they're posting this avatar of them on Facebook. Um, there's a book called The Act Generation by Howard, I forget his name from Harvard, but he points out that uh, young ladies in high school are saying that they're married on Facebook because that option of being married, single, or divorced, or whatever, and they're married to younger freshmen, and their avatar out there in the digital, you know, works life space is a very different person. I don't even know where we're going. Blade Runner, uh, AI, uh, Google. Larry Page said. The internet is going to be in your brain. That's not me saying that. Larry Page is the founder of Google. Google pretty much does what they want. They've got more servers out there than like all governments combined. They're creating it. Well, Bill Gates said that there will be a time when we use them. Oh yeah. Oh, we're coming. That's coming soon. That's I don't. Yeah, that's now. Yeah. Well, and it, and it's cute. This thing that's come out. You know, they're putting the stylus in, and it's it, it's. It's, I don't know, I'm speech to text, it's so funny, it's speech to text, I'll speech to text and text message it, and my brother saw me doing it, he's like, well that takes the fun out of speech to text, I'm like, isn't it about efficiency, or effectiveness of communication, and people won't get rid of their Blackberries now, they're like, I like the thumb pad, I'm like, you're retarded.
unless you like a black bear. You know, it's it's efficiency. Okay, thank you so much. Thank I, you, thank I, you. I, I would go on around. Thank you. Did you ladies have any comments? Oh, let's get it going. Yeah. What do you know? You can use my stuff. Yeah, is that what you're asking? No, not just now. I I don't leave we have until. You want me to help you connect? Sir? Yes. Okay, let's do it. Yes. Sir? Yeah. Hey, Scott. Thank you, sir. It was a pleasure. Thanks for the good. Uh, the will be in touch. Yeah. Uh, Wonderful. Thanks, Adam. No? I'm a cheese ball. I'll close all the time. <laughs> cool. Thanks, Matt. Okay, so you have your laptop. Yes. Yeah. Let's get you wired. I thought that was funny when I, this is one of the newest ones I picked up, and I was like, a pen, a stylus, really? I use it. It's kind of fascinating because it's it's different than the old stylus. Yeah, taking, taking notes, I guess? Is that, um, is that what it's for? And that's a slightly larger screen? Yeah, this is 12.2, and I think this was this is the one that's going to replace the laptop, but then it'll all be replaced by wearables. you got a smartwatch. I've got a watch that will take video, and it'll, you know, I can talk to it. It's Buck Rogers, you know? And Dick Tracy. Dick Tracy. Yeah, that's yeah. Look, <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Tell me, what's your name? Medved. Yes. Okay. Let me get out of your way. Okay. So, do you need uh, an outlet as well? Because I can leave this if you want. Oh, you will leave that soon. I've got if you've got your name on this list, uh, or and or Text message me, go to my website, or email me. I have got at least 20 or 30 books that I can recommend to you. Yeah. That's all I've been doing in Saudi Arabia for the last year and a half, is studying this. And uh, there is, yeah. there's some brilliant information out there. Really okay, I have my name. Okay, cool. Thank you, man.